Welcome in to Friday Night Lives. My name is Craig Crash, and it is finally time to start punching tickets to Lucas Oil Stadium. It is time for the IHSAA semifinal Friday. And right now, we've got a doozy of a game wrapping up here between Ron Colley and East Central in the 4A semi-state. 42 seconds left. It's all tied up at 21 it's going to be a snap, a handoff, as Ron Colley just trying to run down the clock as much as possible in order to set up what would be a field goal to send them to Lucas Oil Stadium to compete for the 4A state championship. So some great games going on right now. We're going to try to hop between as many games as we possibly can. Uh, as there are a lot of good games going on right now. Timeout by East Central. They've taken their final timeout. So fourth down and three. Ron Colley will have a chance at a field goal, and then East Central will have enough time to try to do something out of desperation here. It's gonna be it's gonna be a fun night of football. We've we've already seen some incredible catches in this game. Um, you know, Josh Ringer, Luke Hansen doing battle against each other. This is a game that in the regular season a game that was decided by just two points. What's your take on basement dwelling chicken nugget eating lovers? I mean, hey, teach their own. If that's what you enjoy doing, you 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 enjoy doing that. Don't let anyone take that away from you. So fourth down and three, and this is going to be a run. Oh, my gosh, did they get East Central to jump offside? No, they didn't. Okay. Are they going to try to get East Central to jump here? I mean, look, if it works and you can run the clock all the way down, they'll call a timeout here. I was going to say that was kind of just an odd situation to be in. What's the scores for 6A right now? Uh, so Carroll leads Hamilton Southeastern 14 to 12 with 6:28 to go in quarter number three. They do have the football. They're driving right now inside the 40. Uh, that's the game I've got on the TV monitor here or the uh, computer monitor here. Um, and it is 30 to 10 Center Grove over Cathedral. Uh, that's a score that I did not expect to see. Um, I definitely thought. Uh, that Cathedral would have the upper hand in that game. Uh, still, obviously, some time left. What's the difference between a piano and a tuna? I have no idea. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely a score that I didn't see coming. Another score that I did not see coming is Fort Wayne Bishop Lures up twenty-one to six on Andrean. Did Lawrenceburg win? Uh, they are currently, of course, it doesn't give me the score. They were up 21 to 7 the last time I knew. All right, here's the field goal for Ron Colley to potentially send them to Lucas Oil. Snap, ball down, kick on its way, and it is blocked. Kick is blocked. Oh my God. Wow. East Central gets the blocked field goal. And we are staring at overtime here in the 4A semi-state. Wow. Incredible. You can tune a piano, but you can't piano a tune it. That is a good one. I do like that. What did you think about Brownsburg versus Cathedral last week? I was out of town, so I didn't get a chance to watch it. But, um... It's one of those things where I'm not surprised at the outcome because, I mean, those are two fantastic teams. Um, uh, but I am I am surprised that uh, that Cathedral ended up getting the win. I, I thought Brownsburg would at least get it to the semi-state uh, round. 6A scores, it is 30-10 Center Grove, and it is 14-12 Carroll. Uh, and over Hamilton Southeastern. Carroll driving. Here's a handoff to the running back for uh, Carroll. He gets to inside the 30-yard line on second and five. So he's close to a first down. So we're going to overtime between East Central and Ron Colley. That's nuts. 
That's insane. Well, we get set for overtime between East Central and um, Ron Colley. Let's go ahead and get some scores from around the state. Right now in the third quarter, Fort Wayne Snyder leads Valpo 14-6. Adam Central all over North Judson, 21-0. Uh, Carroll and Hamilton Southeastern. Hamilton Southeastern with the 14-12. Oh, that, that score is wrong. It's Carroll with the 14-12 lead over Hamilton Southeastern. Lutheran leads North Decatur 21-7. Uh, that, are all these scores wrong? Because this shows... Okay, never mind. Yeah, this is, a lot of these scores are flip-flopped for some reason. So let's click on this to make sure that... Because West Lafayette uh, is actually down to Chatard 21-3, but it's showing on this screen that it's 21-3 West Lafayette, so that's not correct. Uh, Whiteland leads Castle 14-7. And then in the fourth quarter, it's Center Grove 30, Cathedral 10. In a game that I did not see being as lopsided as it's been so far. I mean, Center Grove... The thing that's weird about Center Grove is that, you know, I said it in the... The uh, tier list video that I made the other day, uh, 3C Media, over on YouTube. Um, I said the fact that they really haven't... I mean, look, Center Grove is Center Grove. They're a good team. They've made it this far for a reason. They're the two-time defending 6A champs. You know, they went undefeated for two and a half years. But just this year through the state tournament, it seems like they've struggled. And the thing is, is that the teams that they played have not been all that great. I mean, Warren Central, 500. Uh, you know, they played um, in their sectional. They, they you know, Both teams that they beat were under 500. So it's not like, you know, they really were tested in those first few rounds. So to be able to go against Cathedral and just, you know, put up, a clinic like they have is pretty remarkable. So we're getting ready for overtime between East Central and Roncalli. What a game this has turned out to be. Right now, Carroll is driving. It's going to be a pitch to the running back who's going to get around the corner to the 15 around to the 10 it's second and 12 so i'm not entirely sure where they are in terms of down and distance after that play okay so there are, it's going to be about like a third and four it looks like Third and five. Here's the snap. Sullivan's going to throw it to Steele, who's not going to have really... Did he get the first down? Is he far enough? It looked like it was about to the original line of scrimmage. It's the six is where they're going to mark it at. They are going to give him a first down. All right, so first and goal for Carroll. And this is big. I mean, this is late in the third quarter. You have an opportunity to go up by a couple of scores on Hamilton Southeastern, who it's not like they've moved the ball all that efficiently. What game is this? I've got uh, Hamilton Southeastern and Carroll on my computer. We're watching Roncalli and East Central on the big screen. East Central and Roncalli about to go to overtime. So while um, I'm waiting for that game to get into the – Get into the overtime period. I'm updating you guys on Carroll Hamilton Southeastern. Castle game update. Right now it is Whiteland 14, Castle 7 in the second quarter. So it's late in the first late in the first half in that game. We do have a team that's punched their ticket to Lucas Oil Stadium already as Bishop Chittard beats West Lafayette 21-3. to So Bishop Chittard is going to play for the 3-8 state championship and they look for the winner of Lawrenceburg and Monrovia. Which last time I checked, 
Monrovia was not winning. It was Lawrenceburg that was up. Wow, this is this is interesting. From East Central's uh, Twitter account, East Central's last overtime game of the postseason, 2003 semi-state versus Ron Colley. Each team will get four downs from the opponent's 10-yard line. Trojans wins the coin toss, and they will start on defense. So here we go. Oh, Lawrenceburg is up 35-7 to at the half. So Lawrenceburg and Chittard is looking like what it's going to be in the uh, 3A state final. Yeah, Lawrenceburg is up big. So it looks like they're going to go uh, to the state championship. Which, heck, that's going to be an epic game in and of itself in the fact that both teams have outstanding defenses. Fort Wayne Snyder, uh, right now, Valpo and Fort Wayne Snyder are tied. That is That is an outcome I did not see coming. That game is in the fourth quarter, early fourth quarter in that one. All right, so back into Ron Colley and East Central. Here's the handoff. As it's second down and 11, the running back gets to about the five-yard line, so it'll be third down. And we'll see what the Royals draw up here. Third down and six here in this overtime period. Here's the snap, the handoff, running right up the gut, and Roncalli will be inside the five. I'm not entirely on board with this play call. They've basically run a couple of runs right at the teeth of the defense, and while you've got an outstanding running back in Luke Hansen, I mean, you know, you don't... Really set yourself up in a great position here. They're, it's fourth down and four. And they're going to go for it. I mean, if you don't get four yards here, then East Central's in prime position to win this game. Here's the step. It's a direct step. Oh, my God. The ball's on the ground. East Central recovers. There was a miscommunication on the snap. They're on the handoff, excuse me. Snap, the handoff is bobbled. Ball goes on the ground, East Central recovers. Wow. So Roncalli gets nothing. Here it is again, snap. Yeah, it was a man going in motion for Roncalli. Goes right in front of the snap. The ball goes loose and East Central recovers. <coughs> wow. What a classic game this has been between the Trojans and the Royals. Here's the snap. Handoff is to Josh Ringer. He plows forward to about the four yard to about sorry, he plows forward for about four yards to about the six or seven yard line. So this is a situation where now the Trojans can just run it twice, then maybe move it to the middle of the field wherever the kicker wants it, and you have an opportunity to kick yourself to Lucas Oil. Here's a snap. Hand off to Ringer again. Ringer gets to about the five, inside the five. And we shall see... What's the score? Ron Colley and, and East Central are t tied at 21 apiece in overtime. It's third down and goal. East Central's going to call a timeout. And talk things over here. An instant classic between these two teams.
Meanwhile, over in the Carroll game, they're up 21 to 12 on Hamilton Southeastern. Hamilton Southeastern with the ball deep in their own territory inside the 20 yard line. As the third quarter ticks down. And we will have an attempt at the game-winning field goal here. As Ron Colley will call the timeout. Indianapolis Lutheran score. I'll get you that in just a moment. I think it was 24 to 7 Lutheran. Lutheran won. Um Nathan Ma Nathan McPhee is the kicker for East Central. He's about to kick potentially kick the game-winning field goal here. Yeah, Lutheran has punched their ticket to Lucas Oil Stadium. They win 28 to 7 over North Decatur. That's pretty crazy cuz at the half it was tied at 7. So they scored 21 second-half points to advance to their second straight state championship. So it looks like we're going to get a rematch in 1A between uh, Adams Central and Lutheran, the way that uh, those games are panning out. So here we go. Nathan McPhee from, let's see, about it's about a 22-yard field goal, give or take, to send the Trojans of East Central to Lucas Oil Stadium. Snap, ball down, kick on its way, and it is good! It's good! East Central's going to Lucas Oil! Wow! 24-21 to in overtime! Go crazy, East Central! The fans are storming the field. Much deserved. A fantastic run through... The state championship to the state tournament, I can say words, <laughs> a magnificent run through the state tournament. One more game left on the schedule, fireworks going off. They will get the winner of New Prairie and Kokomo next week at Lucas Oil Stadium. Wow. Evansville Modern Day, uh, they were up big the last time I saw. Um, they, which was surprising how, how ahead they were. Um, here, I can just check on it right now, actually, since that game's over with. Um... Who do you have for HSC and Carroll? Um, well, I think I think my official pick going into the weekend was um, Hamilton Southeastern, just because I mean their resume the entire season is just so good with what they've been able to do. All right, modern day right now leads Linton Stockton forty one to twenty two as um, Linton Stockton goes for a field goal and misses it here, so it's a nineteen point lead. For modern day over Linton Stockton. I definitely didn't see that coming. I definitely thought Linton Stockton was going to win this game. If Castle modern day wins, then it's the SEAC conference will have two in the state. That's pretty impressive. That's a tough conference right there. Here's another one I didn't see. Well, wait, no. So that's another game they have reversed the score of. Andrean is up 28-13 to on uh, Lures at the half. So that was another game that um, Max Preps had the opposite.
All right, let's go ahead and look at some other scores here. We're going to get another touchdown from Evansville Modern Day. Modern Day is just absolutely putting it on Linton Stockton. It's a return for a touchdown by Modern Day. They're going to go up 47 to 22. They're going to be up 26 points. I thought Snyder was going to beat Valpo, but it's tied with four minutes left. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. I thought Fort Wayne Snyder uh, was going to clean house. I mean, that's a team that is number one in pretty much every statistical category. Um, you know, be, you know, best margin of victory, best offense, best defense. Valpo is a team... That's made a great run through the tournament, but hasn't really been tested too much. Yeah, we're tied at 14 with two minutes left. And Valpo driving, too. So on third down and nine, here's the snap for Valpo. He's going to chuck it downfield. He's got a man, but it's going to be knocked away by Snyder. Snyder knocks it away. Clock is still running for some reason. They need to stop the clock. The clock, they need to reset this clock. It ran for about another seven seconds. There we go. <laughs> After Get feedback on Carol and HSC. I mean, let's see. Hamilton Southeastern's punting back to um, back to Carroll. Carroll's going to take over at their own 35-yard line with 9:41 to play. I mean Carroll. I mean Carroll's a team. I was. I mean honestly, I was a little afraid to pick them just because I thought Hamilton Southeastern was just going to be a little bit better. Hamilton Southeastern's a team. I mean, you look at it; they beat Fishers twice. They beat Westfield twice, including shutting them out in the regionals. Uh, they beat Brownsburg the final week of the season. It just kind of was looking like Hamilton Southeastern was kind of this team of destiny. Um, and tonight, it looks like they came out a little bit flat. I mean, it was 14-6. to six. They only had six points early, uh, for, you know, for a majority of the first half. They got a touchdown on the, literally the last play of the half. Went for two, didn't get it. Um, and Carroll, I mean, Carroll, who's got a great defense... They have a great offense. They have a lot of players that are really good on that team. They have really come out and played a very good ball game. And I've said it. I mean, I, I all the 6A teams, like I could see any one of those teams winning um, the state championship. I know that I get my, uh, you know, I've got to eat my words a little bit in the sense that I said Center Grove was a dark horse. When we did the tier list video over on YouTube, by the way, if you're watching right now on TikTok, go uh, check out that tier list video if you want to. Um, but basically, you know, I wasn't too keen on Center Grove just because they, their resume wasn't as impressive as I thought it would be. Fourth down and nine for Valpo. Here's the throw. He's got a man. And it's going to be off the fingertips of his wide receiver. And so we're going to get a turnover on down. Snyder's going to get the football back with all three timeouts and about a minute and a half to play. So we'll see what Snyder can do with about 87 seconds left to go in the game. How much of the field do they have? Uh, they're getting the ball back at about their own 30, 35 yard line, it looks like. So they've got quite a bit of distance to cover here. They're on their own 34. Shotgun formation. He's uh, The quarterback's got two wide receivers to the right, one to the left. He's going to just tuck it and run. He's to the 35 to the 40. He's got a little bit of an alley, gets across the 43. Whoever's operating this clock is, or I mean, I think it's I think it's the scoreboard for the TV broadcast, not necessarily the in uh, the on field one, because they like have not started the clock and then they'll stop it way after. 
Anyway, second down and two. Here's the snap. Hand off. It's going to be a first down as that's a run almost to the 50-yard line. Snyder's going to have it at their own 49. As Snyder's hurrying up to the line. First down and 10 at about midfield. Here's a snap. Fakes the handoff. It's going to be a short little throw in and out of the hands of the receiver. So with that, the clock will stop. We'll see what Snyder has cooking here. Second down and 10. 45 seconds to go. They just got to get in field goal range. Let's see. Um, it's a three wide receiver set. One running back in the backfield. Here's the snap for Snyder. Quarterback is looking. He's going to tuck it and run it himself. They do have all three timeouts. They get across the 50 to the 48. And yeah, I was going to say, we got to get a timeout for Snyder. Doing my best Peyton Manning impression from that one Monday night game where he kept calling timeout for Denver. Uh, let's see. Field goals. Oh, here we go. So, Schneider on the season is 0 for 3 on field goal attempts. Look, I've always been a big proponent of having a good field goal kicker in high school football because it feels like it's always few and far between. And it's not always at the lower levels where it's harder to find kids to, you know, play. It's it's at the higher levels too sometimes. It's, it's you know, you've got a team that's, you know, number one in the state and yet they've, they've, they're have they 0-4 on field goals. Here's a throw down the middle. It's in and out of the hands of the receiver. If the catch was made, it would have been down to the 25-yard line. But instead, it's going to be third down. No, it's fourth down, excuse me, at the 48-yard line. Now, Valpo has no timeouts. And it does look like Snyder's going to punt here. Yeah, that does eliminate the field goal, yeah. <laughs> well, and the unfortunate thing, too, is that we don't have, like, any sort of kind of, uh, you know, stats. We don't have, like, s real in-depth stats. Like, I would love to know, like, are the, all those field goals, like, where are those field goals at? Like, have they only attempted a field goal, like, at the end of the half, at their, at, like, you know, from 30 yards out, 35 yards out, 40 yards out. We don't have that kind of those kind of statistics, obviously, at, at the high school level. That would be nice to know. So Schneider punts it away. Valpo has it at their own 14-yard line with 23 seconds, and it looks like they're going to just kneel it and play for overtime. So we're going to have another overtime, uh, another overtime game to determine who's going to go to Lucas Oil. As Valpo snaps it, kneels it, and we're going to see yet another overtime game. So some games that have already gone final tonight. Chatard punches their ticket to Lucas Oil. They beat West Lafayette 21-3. Indianapolis Lutheran wins 28-7 over North Decatur. They will square off for the second year in a row against Adams Central in the 1A state championship game. Adams Central beating North Judson 35 to nothing. East Central over Ron Colley in overtime on a last-second field goal. Uh, East Central wins that one 24-21. Center Grove all over Cathedral and, and a huge surprise, not necessarily by the result, but how lopsided the result was. Center Grove wins 33-10 over Cathedral. And right now with 5.45 to play here in 
quarter number four. It's Hamilton Southeastern trailing Carroll 21 to 12. Although Hamilton Southeastern does have a second down and 15 on the Carroll 31 yard line. Here's the snap. And looking, looking is the quarterback. He's going to throw it. It's in and out of the hands and of the receiver. Incomplete. And it's going to be third down and 15. This essentially, I mean, I know Hamilton Southeastern has all three timeouts. This is essentially the game, I would imagine. Because, um, they're down by nine here in the, in the, um, fourth quarter. Here's the snap on third and 15. Throw is short. It's going to be caught. Hamilton Southeastern is going to get it down to the 21 yard line. I would imagine it's four down territory. It's going to be a fourth down and short. It's going to be fourth down and about four. Yeah, fourth and four. Clock now under five minutes to play in the game. Carroll playing for an opportunity to face Center Grove in the 6A state championship game. Hamilton Southeastern trying to keep their dream season alive. Here's the snap. The throw. No, the quarterback's going to run it himself. He's going to be tackled. I think he's short. I don't think he got there. And it looks like it's going to be a turnover on downs. Carroll's going to get the football back. A great job by uh, Carroll to... Locked down the quarterback there. Didn't have anywhere to throw it. So now with 4.41 to play, Carroll's got the football back. Hamilton Southeastern is going to have to start taking their timeouts. As it's going to be a short run for Hamilton Southeastern. Or sorry, for Carroll. It's going to be about a two-yard run. As Valparaiso and Snyder are going to be in overtime, the snow picking up a little bit. Snyder will have the football first in overtime. Each team will start at the 10-yard line and get four opportunities. What's the Hamilton Southeastern Carroll score? Carroll right now with under four minutes to play in quarter number four. Carroll leads 21-12 to over Hamilton Southeastern. Is it first to score in overtime in high school? No, it is not. It's so it's each team will get four plays from the ten yard line. It's it's similar to college overtime. Yeah, Wow is right. I definitely did not. I mean, it's not that I didn't expect Carroll to win. I just thought Hamilton Southeastern would play a little bit better than they have. But Carroll has just shut down the Royals. Here's the snap for Snyder. He's looking for a receiver. Oh my gosh, he's got wide open space. Snyder's going to score on the first play of overtime, and Snyder is going to have the lead. The quarterback for Snyder was looking for someone to go to. The running back leaked out of the backfield, and no one covered him. Short little dump pass, and nobody between the running back and the end zone as Snyder. Strikes first in overtime. So here on the extra point, which is huge here. Snap, ball down, kick on its way, and it is good. So Snyder strikes in overtime, 21-14 to the score. And now their defense is going to have to step up against Valpo.
Update on Carroll. It's third down and 18 under three minutes to play. Hamilton Southeastern has not had to touch any of their timeouts as here is the tackle there. It's going to be fourth down. So Hamilton Southeastern is going to get the football back in decent field position. All three timeouts with about two minutes to play. All right, so here's Valpo's overtime possession. Here's the snap. It's going to be a running play, and all the way down inside the five to about the four is Valparaiso. So second down and goal from just inside the five. Here's the second down play for the Vikings. Here's the snap. He's going to run it up the middle, and they're going to get a false start on Valpo. The center started to hike it and then almost replaced it back down on the line of scrimmage, and so that's going to be a false start. A huge break for Snyder is now that'll be a second and nine instead of a second and five. It was almost like a pump fake on the snap. What, hey, what do you think about Pike football? Um, I hope they get better, man. I I know Pike for a lo for a while was a pretty good team. Is out of the Wildcat comes Valparaiso. Nothing doing though. As Snyder's all over it, protecting against the option there. It's a short gain, if anything, and it's going to be third down and nine yards to go for Valpo here. Yeah, I remember when Pike was was one of the top teams in 6A for for a while and and you want you hope they get back there. Third down and goal. Here's the snap. Fakes the handoff, running right up the gut again. Nothing doing as the Snyder defense is able to make the stop and it's going to be fourth down and 8 yards for Valpo to try to keep their season alive. Same score for Hamilton, Southeastern, and Carroll. Yeah, just under two minutes to play. And Hamilton, Southeastern has the football back. Right now, Hamilton, Southeastern has the ball at the 45-yard line of Carroll, first and 10, with 152 to play, down by nine. Here's the snap. Quarterback is looking. He heaves it downfield. He's got a man in double coverage. He's going to overthrow him, though, by about 10 yards. And it's going to be second down and 10. So here we go. Fourth down and eight yards to go for the Valpo Vikings. The dream run they've had through the state championship round, uh, tournament. And Snyder's going to call a timeout. Tension continues to build. Hamilton Southeastern, another big throw attempt. Oh my gosh, he had a man. Would have been a great catch if he would have stayed in bounds. Instead, the ball goes through the hands of the receiver, out of bounds, and it's second down and 10. Hamilton Southeastern, they know what they got to do. They're, they're taking these big chance plays downfield. They're just not coming to fruition. All right, no more timeouts to be had. 
Fourth down and eight for the Valpo Vikings to keep their run alive. Down by seven to Snyder. Here's the snap. Looking to the end zone. Pressure coming. Eludes the pressure. Now he's going to tuck it. Trying to stay alive. Still on his feet. He's got blockers. He's going to take it himself. He's going to die for the end zone. He's in. Touchdown Valpo. What a play by the quarterback. Holy. What a play. And it looks like Valpo is going to go for two here. Here's the snap. Here's the handoff. Run right up the gut. Valpo goes for two and gets it. Valpo's going to the state championship game. Oh, wow. A gutsy call. Wow. Heartbreak for Snyder. Enthusiastic. Enthusiasm for Valpo. I can't talk. I can't see. I can't believe what I just saw. The run went right up the gut. Valpo scores. Wow. It was Justin Clark with the amazing run to get Valpo in the end zone. And then Nolan Johnson. Oh, sorry. Then it was Travis Davis the second on the run to send Valparaiso to the state championship game. Huge. All right, let's get the end of uh, Hamilton Southeastern and Carroll here. Man, you were wrong about Center Grove. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, I definitely didn't see this outcome happening. Um, not necessarily them winning. I, I, I'm not surprised that they won. Um, I'm definitely surprised that they won by as much as they did. But man, hats off to them. Because I mean, looking at it, going into the semi-state round, I mean, you've got Cathedral, you know, playing super well, just beat Brownsburg, uh, you know, beat beat Center Grove by 11 in the regular season. You've got Hamilton Southeastern, who's had this amazing run. You know, I pegged Center Grove as at least the third, if not fourth best team. I mean, Carroll's right now playing really well. Um, so that's about where I had the Trojans, just because their season hasn't hadn't been... Re- I mean, even though they're 10-2, and two, hasn't been really what we expected out of them. So, I'm happy to be wrong. Center Grove has an opportunity for a three-peat. That's pretty incredible. So setting this up here, Carroll is up 21 to 12 with f- about 48 seconds to go. As Hamilton Southeastern calls a timeout. Lawrenceburg has punched their ticket. They beat Monrovia 35 to 7. How CG Center Grove won. 33 to 10. Ooh, direct snap and it's a fumbled snap. 
Hamilton Southeastern back to the 10 yard line. So it's third down and 10. Carroll up 21 to 12. 44 seconds left. Hamilton Southeastern on the doorstep of the end zone. They're going to need to score a touchdown here and then get an onside kick to have a chance to keep that dream season alive. Look, all the 6A teams are really close. It would have been boring in the. In the uh, in the tier list video, if I was like, yeah, all six of them could win. If I was like, yeah, all six are banner raisers. That wouldn't have been a whole lot of fun to do. So, you know, like I said, 6A is real close. You know, I, I didn't see... Uh, here's a snap by Hamilton Southeastern. It's a fade to the end zone, knocked away by the defense. It's going to be fourth down. Great defensive play there. Yeah, I mean, Carroll, um, you know, I thought it was going to be, you know, potentially Hamilton Southeastern and Cathedral. That's that's the matchup I I thought was going to happen. Um, but, um, I could, you know, I wouldn't have been surprised that, I, you know, Carroll Center Grove, is probably the most surprising because I don't think you would have been surprised at Cathedral and Hamilton Southeastern would have been surprised at Cathedral and Carroll. I put, I, yeah, I put, what did I do? I put Carroll or I put Cathedral and, and Hamilton Southeastern as banner raisers and, uh, uh, Carol and um, Center Grove is Dark Horses. Who are the 5A semi-state teams? Um, it's going to be uh, Valpo, and I don't know who won the other game. Let me see. Whiteland's the 5A, right? Whiteland just went up. Yeah, I think it is Whiteland. Whiteland just went up 20 to 7 in their game. Yeah, so it looks like it's going to be Whiteland and Valpo. That's the way it's shaping up right now. Whiteland up 20 to 7 right now in Castle. So we're going to get a field goal from Hamilton Southeastern. Snap ball down, kick on the way, and it is good. So now it's a six-point game. Hamilton Southeastern trails now 21-15, to 15, and we're going to see an onside kick coming up. So looking at the teams that have punched their ticket, the 1A state championship game is set. Lutheran beats North Decatur 28-7. Adam Central beats North Judson 35 to nothing. Um, Evansville modern day, that game is pretty much all over except for the final gun is there up last time I checked, they were up by 26 on Linton Stockton. That was pretty surprising there. Um, they will play, uh, and the winner of Andrean and Bishop Lures, Andrean was up 28 to 13 at the half on, uh, Bishop Lures. The 3A state championship is set as it'll be Lawrenceburg versus Shatar. Lawrenceburg winning 35 to 7. Over Monrovia, Chittard winning 21-3 over West Lafayette. 4A is still left to be decided. Don't have a Kokomo New Prairie update, but they will play uh, the uh, they will play East Central as East Central wins 24 to 21 um, in overtime over Ron Colley. So we've got an onside kick coming here. The onside is away. Hamilton or Carroll recovers the onside kick, 
And that will be that. That's the first state championship for Carroll, barring anything crazy here. Can't believe Gibson Southern lost in sectionals, had them winning state again. I mean, I honestly, their, their sectional, if I remember correctly, was pretty, I don't want to say loaded, but it was pretty tough. It was going to be tough for them to get out of there. Um, they honestly impressed me. I thought they weren't going to do quite as well. I mean, they lost quite a bit from their state championship game last year. Um, I definitely didn't see them being one of the top teams in their class this year, and they were. They were really good. So here's the snap by Carroll. Takes a knee. Doesn't look like Hamilton Southeastern will call a timeout or anything. So Carroll's going to state, the Carroll Chargers. Pretty incredible. All right, so we've got some finals here. Let's find another game to watch here. So Carroll and uh, Hamilton Southeastern is over. Snyder's over. Let's check in on Evansville Modern Day and Lincoln. Lincoln. Linton. So Evansville Modern Day putting the finishing touches on there. They are up with about a minute to play 51-28 on Linton Stockton. Look, if, if you guys are going to give me crap about Center Grove, give me crap about Linton. I had Linton as a banner raiser, and they get beat by 23 points tonight. <laughs> I, I, I talked about you know how, oh, Linton Stockton's so good. I don't see anybody beating them. They're a banner raiser or whatever. And they get absolutely drubbed tonight. Who will Center Grove play next week? They will play Carroll in the 6A state championship. So Modern Day putting the finishing touches on there. Whiteland and Castle, who's going to be playing Valpo next week? We'll see that score here just momentarily. So at the end of the third quarter... Whiteland is up 21 to 7 on Castle. We've got a commercial right now with Andrain and Fort Wayne Lures. I'm trying to get that scoped out right now. So with 9-10 to go in the third, and Drayan's up 28-16 to on Fort Wayne Lures. So it's shaping up at 1A and 2A. It's shaping up to be a rematch in both of those classes, as it'll be Lutheran and um, Adam Central for the second straight year. And Drayan, are they going to get this kick return all the way back? One man to beat for Andrean on the return. He's forced out of bounds.
So in the, in the two A uh, game, it looks like it's going to be Andrean and Evansville Modern Day again. Are these are these the only games still on? Yeah, it looks like it. All right, so that game's over. That game's over. Let's see, is that game officially over between Modern Day and Linton? North Decatur lost. They did. I thought they would, but they put a, up a nice game in the first half. Lawrenceburg won. They did. Lawrenceburg is really good. Evansville Modern Day. They are officially moving on. So let's see. We've got two games going on right now. Let's go ahead and turn on Castle and Whiteland. How does the home team get sorted out? I know they don't have two in a row. I'm not entirely sure how that all gets mapped out. But yeah, they can't get two in a row. I don't know if they just like have to mutually decide on where to go. I don't know. Because Center Grove and Cathedral was played at Indiana, Indianapolis Tech. Right, uh, Modern Day uh, and Linton Stockton was played at the Wrights Bowl. But yet Carroll was at home. I think Snyder was at home. Uh, Andrean looks to be at home. Castle's at home. Um, so I think I think what it is I, at, at the minimum. I think what it is is whoever was home in the last game. If like let's say let's say Whiteland was at home and Castle was on the road, like that flip flops. I'm not entirely sure exactly. Went to the North game. It was pretty good up until uh, Carson uh, threw picks. Yeah. Wyland had a better record, but we had a two hour, uh, two and a half hour drive south. Hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't one hundred percent know how it all gets sorted out. Unfortunately, I'm not too sure. I also can't believe East Central won. Any idea who they'll play? Um, I'm looking for a Kokomo uh, New Prairie score because that's who they'll play. Oh wow, New Prairie won uh, ten to nine. Wow. So New Prairie and Kokomo with the ten to nine uh, score there. So Nor New Pr it's going to be. So here's what's set up so far. 1A is Lutheran and uh, Adam Central, a rematch of last year. Another rematch of last year at the 2A level, it's looking like anyway. Evansville Modern Day punches their ticket. Andrean's leading. If, that's, if that holds up, then that'll be a rematch. 3A is going to be Bishop Chatard and Lawrenceburg. 4A is East Central, excuse me, East Central and... Um, New Prairie. 5A is uh, uh, Valpo. And then the winner of Whiteland and Castle is looking to be Whiteland um, as they lead 21-7. to And then um, 6A is going to be uh, Center Grove and uh, Carroll. Um... I want to, before it gets too late here, I want to look at my uh, tier list and see exactly how everything shook out here. Okay, so 
Let's see. My banner raisers in the tier list was Lutheran. They're uh, going to Lucas Oil. I had the winner of Ron Colley and East Central, basically. So I had both those teams as banner raisers. East Central moves on. I had Cathedral and Hamilton Southeastern both as banner raisers. They both lost. Um, I had uh, Linton Stockton as a banner raiser. They lost. West Lafayette as a banner raiser. They lost. I had Snyder as a banner raiser. They lost. So two of my uh, eight teams that I had as banner raisers in my tier list um, made it through. The rest of them lost. Ticket to Lucas Oil teams. Andrean, they're still alive. Whiteland, they're still alive. North Judson lost. Lawrenceburg won. Adam Central won. So I've got three, and Whiteland is winning. So I've got four of my five Ticket to Lucas Oil teams. Dark Horse teams were um, Center Grove, Kokomo, Castle, Evansville, Modern Day, Carroll, and Chittard. So let's see. One two, three, four. Four of the six Dark Horse teams I had um, ended up punching their ticket to state. And then my nice run butt teams were Valpo, they move on, New Prairie, they move on, and then Monrovia, uh, Lures, and North Decatur. North Decatur's lost, and the um, Lures is losing at the moment. So... How about them CG Trojans four years straight? Hey, look, heck of an effort. I Like I said, I, I did not see that result coming. I thought that, I mean, look, all the 6A teams were super close. Um, uh, the fact is what's impressive to me because this entire run through the state tournament, like you look at what Center Grove has done on the season – you know, obviously not losing until like halfway through the season or whatever it was. I think it was a third of the way through the season they lost uh, their first game in like two years. Um, so obviously they've had a sensational season. The main thing that made me leery with them as opposed to, um, you know, Hamilton Southeastern, who's been on this dream run, um, and Cathedral, who's got all this talent, and Danny O'Neill, Jerron Tibbs, all these guys. What made me leery of them is the fact that in the tournament, they beat Frank they beat Franklin Central by four. Franklin Central's three and seven. They beat Columbus North, who's five and six. Um, they blew them out, thankfully, but they beat them who's five and six and they beat Warren central in the regional 42 to 32, uh, Warren central finishes the season at six and six. So all of those teams <coughs> aren't like nobody they beat through the course of the state tournament was really that impressive of a win. So that was the one thing that made me a little leery because again, you got Samilton Southeastern who's beat Westfield twice, beat Fishers twice, beat Brownsburg in the regular season. Um, you've got Cathedral who, you know, beat Brownsburg. They beat everybody they played this season, basically. So that was the one thing that just kind of made me leery about Center Grove going into the, going into semi-state weekend. No one thought they would be as good considering all they lost. Yeah, exactly. They had so much, but I mean, Center Grove, honestly, I'm interested to see what they do at Lucas Oil next week, because I mean, they do have quite a bit of talent. Their quarterback spacing on the name right now, but their quarterback's good. Um, Micah Coyle is insane. Um, they've got a lot of good talent on that team. The 6A final will be great. I agree with that. That's going to be a fun game to watch. I don't know who I'm picking yet. Uh, this week, B. Scott and I are going to do our, uh, state championship preview. So look out for that on the 3C Media YouTube channel. Uh, where we'll be previewing all six of the state championship games. And honestly, yeah, I don't know. I don't know who I'm picking to be honest. In a lot of these games, um, it's it's been a it's been a wide open state tournament. Uh, definitely, a lot of the teams. Heck, the teams that B Scott and I had. B Scott and I were, um, w w like basically had the same picks for who we thought um, were going to win the state championship. We had um, South Adams winning one A. They're done, obviously. We had Andrean, Andrean winning 2A. That could still happen. We both had West Lafayette winning 3A. They lost tonight. We had Mooresville winning. Um, got Mooresville. We had Mooresville winning 4A. They didn't make it out of sectional. 
We had Merrillville winning 5A. I don't think they made it out of sectional. No, they lost in the regional. Um, and then we had Cathedral winning 6A, and they got beat tonight. So um, it's, you know, and some of these teams, like, we didn't even have on our radar. No, not that we didn't have them on our radar, but we, you know, definitely didn't have them, like, you know, our first or second pick to win at all. My kids went to CG. I'm a huge fan. Hey, let's go. Yeah, I mean, Center Grove, the run they've been on, like, I definitely, I thought this was the year everything was going to kind of slow down for them. And, hey, they're, they're continuing to keep on clicking. Yeah, I don't know who I'm picking next week between Center Grove and um, Center Grove and Carroll. That's going to be a tough one because I think Center Grove. I like. I think I like Center Grove's offense a smidge more, but I like Carroll's defense a lot. Although Center Grove did a great job of you know putting in a good word for their defense. In the fact that they shut down Cathedral to only ten points, that's that's super impressive. I will say one thing about Whiteland's uniforms: I really like them because they remind me of Boise State. I don't know if it's the lighting or whatever, but they remind me of Boise State. Whiteland leads Castle twenty-one to seven with seven and a half minutes left to go. In quarter number four. That game's winding down. Right now with 4.57 to go in the third, it's Andrean up 41-22, to 22, it looks like, is the score. I don't know that I'll be live until that game ends. I'm trying to make it to the end of Whiteland and Castle. 41-23 to 23, the score for Andrean. Was hoping to see HS for uh, Hamilton Southeastern versus uh, Center Grove. I'm honestly surprised that the uh, the run ended the way it did for Hamilton Southeastern. It kind of ended with a thud after all they've done the entire season. Uh, but an incredible run again. Hamilton Southeastern, a team, you know, we talked in our six A preview. We talked about Center Grove. We talked about Cathedral. We talked about Brownsburg. We talked about Carmel. We we Hamilton Southeastern was not on our radar. Uh, we didn't really, um, I mean, you know, we, I didn't really take notice of Hamilton Southeastern really until they beat Fishers. When they beat Fishers in overtime, I think that was kind of their, I can't remember if that was before or after their win over Westfield, but that to me was kind of like the signal of like, okay, this team's, I think, I think those were back to back weeks. They beat, um, Westfield, I think they beat Fishers and then Westfield. It's either it's it's one of those two. It's either they beat Westfield then Fishers or they beat Fishers and Westfield. And that was kind of when you're like, oh, okay, this team is for real. And the fact that they beat Brownsburg in the last week of the season. Now, granted, Brownsburg didn't have Jaden Whitaker for that game, but I mean, you know, still got to go out there and play the game, and and that's and they won in pretty surprising fashion. Carmel, in my eyes, was the biggest disappointment in 6A this year. Yeah, I, I agree. Because well, their record wasn't super great, was it? They, they didn't even have like a good record on the year. They were like around 500, weren't they? I mean, of course, yeah, they were 6-4. and four. So they were 6-3 and three going into the tournament, lose the sectional opener, so the sectional semifinals, essentially. Uh, yeah, and, and lose with a thud. They lost, I mean, they lose to Louisville Trinity, which, I mean, I don't, know how good or bad Louisville Trinity is. Um, they lose to Center Grove by four. Um, they pretty much take care of business against um, Detroit Tech, Cast Tech, Pike, Lawrence North, 
um, North Central. They beat Ben Davis by seven. That that's probably their most impressive win on the year. The fact that they beat Ben Davis uh, twenty one to fourteen. Because yeah, then they lose to Warren Central, who Warren Central around five hundred as well. And then Lauren Central, who is okay. I mean, they're middle of the road, I think. I mean, I think they were ranked at one point. CG, oh, th- was that the same team? I didn't realize that. Center Grove lost to Trinity as well in double overtime. I got you. Okay, so Louisville Trinity is pretty good then. I Yeah, I didn't realize that was the same team. At Trinity. I got you. Man, 29 to 28 in double overtime. I remember seeing that when they lost. Let's see. Whiteland is going for it on fourth down and three with four minutes to go, down 14. And we're going to get a false start on Castle. So Castle's going to have a fourth down and eight now to try to keep their game alive. But yeah, I want to look at Center Grove's roster real quick. Noah Coy, that's that's the other um, the other. Uh, I knew there was another wide receiver that was really good. Noah Coy is good. Um, Tyler Cherry's good. They've had some players really step up this year. I mean, when you churn out, um, you know, guys like Carson Steele, you know. Guys that are committing, committing and going to Tennessee. Um, Tyler was a transfer. Where did he come from? How's West Lafayette doing? They lost twenty-one to three. Caden Curry. That yeah. Out of state. Yeah, he ended up going to Ohio State, right? So yeah, they. I mean. You look at all the talent they lost, and you you are thinking, like, oh, man, how are they going to keep this up? And, I mean, they just keep right on clicking. And it's kind of crazy, too, because, like, you have a team that's won two straight state titles, had, you know, had this streak of, you know, were, had won 30 straight games, essentially, um, going, you know, through the court into this season. Um, and... Yet again, I think I mean Center Grove. I don't think was, I mean at least now. Granted, I you know I'm not, you know this is our first year covering high school, um, you know football on the channel and everything. So I'm not like as in the inner circles as everything else. But I think with all the other things going on, Brownsburg doing really well. Um, you know Carmel's always going to get a lot of fodder. Uh, you know Hamilton Southeastern their run Cathedral being in six A. Like I feel like Center Grove was kind of under the radar a little bit, which kind of feels weird, um, you know, to think about the fact that, I mean, at least that's how it felt to me. Maybe I'm completely wrong, but I just feel like, a, you know, Center Grove is just kind of, you know, it's, it's weird to have a team that's a two-time defending champion being, you know, kind of an under-the-radar team, but hey, third straight trip, or what, fourth straight trip to Lucas Oil? Tyler was a transfer from another state, I believe. I got you. Wonder if Trayvon Jackson will transfer or stay as a backup at Tennessee. Well, I mean, is is Hinton Hooker gonna go to the draft this next year? I mean, as a Colts fan, I'm hoping so. Um, I think Hinton Hooker could be drafted this year, so he's probably gonna leave. So I don't know where that leaves uh, Tr- uh, Taven. I don't know where he is on the depth chart, but. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I think Taven will transfer seeing how the number one quarter, high school quarterback is committed. Okay, yeah, probably then. I wonder if he would – where would he go? 
I mean, obviously, you commit to Tennessee, you could probably go pretty much anywhere. But I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud here where like you would, you would, where it would be on your radar. Let's see. Let's look at where Taven Jackson was like projected to go. If I could type, I can't type at all, man. Let's see. I know IU wanted him. Let's see. Where's where? Let's see. He had an offer from Ole Miss. I'm not the boards. Give me. Give me the recruiting profile. Is that what I want? Let's see. He was. He received an offer from Tennessee, Arizona State, Arkansas, Auburn, and Ball State, it looks like. Oh, he received 34 offers, but he only made one visit, which was to Tennessee. So he's going to he's gonna have – let's see. Let's look at the offers. Tennessee, Arizona State, Arkansas, Auburn, Ball State, Central Michigan, Cincinnati, Florida, Florida State, Georgia Tech, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas State, Louisville, Michigan, Michigan State, Minnesota, Missouri, NC State, Nebraska, Oklahoma State, Ole Miss, Oregon, Pittsburgh, Rutgers, South Carolina, TCU, Texas A&M, Toledo, UCF, UCLA, Washington, West Virginia, Washington State, West Virginia. So, it's a lot. <laughs> Peyton swayed him to go balls. I gotcha. IU wanted him. I mean, heck, that's a team that, that needs a quarterback. That would be a, a big game changer for um, the Hoosiers if they were able to get him. So yeah, that's that's, uh, that's quite the list there. So I'm I'm sure he will not have trouble finding. another place to go I mean not that that was a question but hell of a basketball player as well any thoughts on the Pacers trades um I mean I like what the Pacers are doing right now I really um I'm really liking the direction the team is going um I'm not super locked in on the Pacers as I probably should be. Um but I I I do hope I do hope that they hold off on trading Heald unless it's like the absolute right situation. I'm hoping they trade Miles Turner. Um but I'd almost rather I'd almost rather see Miles Turner walk and we don't get anything for him if that means that like buddy healed stays on the roster or we get the absolute best value for buddy healed i want buddy healed to stay but um like i don't want like i don't want to get i don't want to pe- see buddy healed and miles turner get packaged for a trade that's like not the best trade does that mean does that make sense like i don't want to see them not really get you know get anywhere six a final scores uh center grove beats cathedral uh 33 to 10 carol beats hamilton southeastern 21 to 15 so it'll be carol versus center grove in the state championship (coughs) we're waiting on two scores at the moment right now with a minute 34 to play uh Whiteland leads Castle uh 21 to 7. Once that game ends, I'll probably end the live. Um just because I do have work in the morning. Um and Andrean's you know, last time I checked was not having a lot of trouble with lures. And Whiteland gets a first down, so it looks like they'll be able to kind of run the clock down here. Oh. 
Let's see. Yeah, going into the fourth quarter, Andrean leads 42-23 to over Fort Wayne Lures. So that's a 19-point lead for Andrean going into the final quarter of play. So I think Andrean's going to get the win there. So Whiteland is going to get the win over Castle. So let's go ahead and take one final look at the scores here from around the state of Indiana. So, for the 1A state championship, we're going to see Lutheran versus Adam Central as Lutheran wins 28 to 7 over North Decatur. We see Adam Central win 35 to nothing over North Judson. At the 2A level, Evansville Modern Day takes care of Linton Stockton 51 to 28. They're going to likely get their rematch with Andrean as Andrean leads 41 to 23 or 42 to 23 entering the fourth quarter of play there. 3A is going to be Lawrenceburg versus Bishop Chatard as Lawrenceburg wins 35 to 7 over Monrovia. Chatard winning 21 to 3 over West Lafayette. 4A uh, was one of our overtime thrillers today as East Central gets the 24 21 win over Ron Colley in overtime. They will face New Prairie at Lucas Oil Stadium for the 4A state championship as New Prairie wins a defensive struggle with Kokomo 10 to 9. 5A. Uh, another overtime thriller as Valpo wins 22 to 21 on a two point conversion in overtime. They beat Fort Wayne Schneider 22 to 21. Uh, they will face Whiteland as Whiteland has just gone final with Castle 21 to seven. Um, and then at 6A, Center Grove all over Cathedral 33 to 10, and Carroll beating Hamilton Southeastern 21. -10. To 15. So those are going to be your state championship matchups. Go Whiteland. Thanks for chatting. Yeah, thank you to everybody who stopped by tonight and uh, hung out here in the live. Uh, we're going to do the same thing next week as well for the state championship. Um, I'm not entirely sure how the schedule is going to work out, um, but just be on the lookout. I'll try to do better as at like you know broadcasting everything, uh, you know to make sure that you guys know what I'm going to be doing because next week I do have to kind of work around my work schedule a little bit, um, but I do plan on being live um, for at least you know I don't know if I'll be live for both night games next week for the state finals, but we'll kind of work that thing at work work you know that out one way or the other. But um, the schedule, the way it's looking like, if you did miss any of the live tonight and you want to go back and relive any of the moments, this will be going up on YouTube on Sunday, so make sure you're locked in 3C Media over there. Um, and then um, uh, once we uh, once that gets uploaded, uh, we're going to then have a state championship preview. That's going to be the Crash Course Podcast this week, so make sure you're locked into that. We'll be previewing all six of these games. Um, coming up on state finals weekend. Uh, so we're going to have you guys covered. And like I said, I'll be live next week as well. Um, so, uh, a lot of, a lot of football left to be played here on the season. Uh, I'm excited, um, to see what the state finals have in store. Thank you for what you do. Hey, I appreciate you guys for being here. Um, you know, this doesn't happen without your guys' support. Um, so, um, I, I definitely thank you guys for hanging out tonight. Uh, it was a lot of fun, a lot of great games tonight as uh, we get the state finals set for next week. So look out for the content coming up down the pike. We've got a lot of cool things um, you know, set for you guys. So I will see you guys on, uh, well, new video coming out Sunday, like I said. I'll see you guys on Tuesday for the Crash Course Podcast. Actually, that'll come out on Wednesday. We record Tuesday. It'll come out Wednesday on YouTube and wherever podcasts can be heard. Make sure you're following us at 3C Media Sports on Twitter. Go like us on Facebook, 3C Media. Uh, you can hear the Crash Course Podcast on uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, wherever podcasts can be heard. Um, also on YouTube as well. Um, if you're watching on YouTube now, 3C Media on TikTok, that's where everybody else has been watching us tonight. Um, and until next time, have a good one, everybody. Enjoy your weekend.